Uh, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today we'll be learning about not only structured query language injection. Ultimately, it is very similar to how a structured query language injection works in the sense that we're trying to put in logical Boolean operators into a query in the application layer that will then be passed over into database, ultimately giving us access into different parts and components of the database system. In this case, it could be a Mongo database, it could be a not only structured query database. So right in front of us, I have OWSP Juice Shop, Open Web Application Security Project Juice Shop running. And this is a vulnerable website for us to run all our ethical hacking techniques on. And again, big disclaimer, Hacking is illegal. If you want to, all right, check out bug bounty programs provided by those websites that you want to test on first before you accidentally crash your websites or even do a drop table, okay? So this is critical as part of your learning. So right in front of us, what we can do now is go ahead and log into the website. So I have already created an account. So I'll go to the top right corner, click under account and click login. So on the login page, I can go ahead and enter my email address. In this case, hackerloy at loyliangyang.com. And then I can enter the password field to log in into the website. So I'll click login now. And right in front of us, we have all these different products. So this is a listing of all the products that's available. So one important way for us to do our learning on is to be able to identify what kind of application programming interfaces calls are being made every time we hit into different pages of a website. So you go to the top right corner under settings, click on the web developer and click under network tab. So once you click onto the network tab, you can see right here, we have the network and I can do a refresh and we can begin identifying all the calls that are being made. So you can see here, we have the status, we have the method and you can see JavaScripts being downloaded. You can see here, we have made calls to API slash challenges. We have another one, which is API slash quantities. So this network developer tab is important in helping us identify what are the different kind of API calls being made into the website or through the application system. So what we can do next now is to go ahead and click onto any of the products. So I can go and clear, click onto the products and you can see right here, we clicked onto apple juice and we had following apple juice. And of course we have reviews. So you can see here at the bottom, we have a 200 status. And of course there is a file called review. So I can click on it and we can see right here, this is the hater. So we have a get to an IP address, a port number slash rest products slash one slash reviews. So if I go ahead and click onto Apple Pomace, so if I clicked on it, we get another call. So if I clicked on it, we can see here, it's a slightly different one. So get 192.168.0.106, port 3000 slash res products 24 slash reviews. So again, every different products, you can see the changes being made into the product slash. All right, so this is the part where it can be from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whichever the case is, all right? So this will likely be the injection point that we'll go after, okay? So what I can do now is to go ahead and click on to say, banana juice, all right? I'll click on it and you can see right here, there is a particular review. So I can click on it and it states the following, bender at juice-sh.op ASD two, right? So this is a review for a particular product. So once we are able to see this here, I can try to drop a review. So I can enter, say, for example, review by Hacker Loy. So I'll go ahead and click submit and look at what kind of APIs have been called here. So in this case, we have a slightly different status 201. So let's go ahead and click on and see what's showing here. 201 created. So we can click under the requests and you can see the following auto message and I can see the response here, success. So we managed to put into, all right, a review into the product. So click on the second one here. So you click on the headers and you can see here, get into the IP address, port 3000 slash rest slash product six reviews. Click on the response, you can see the following success. And we have the message ASD2, Bender, and then we have review by Hacker Loy, all right? So right now we're able to retrieve all these different values. So what we can do now is to go ahead and say, clear all of those network information and activities that we've seen earlier. And I'll click on Apple Juice. I can do a right click and click on Edit Ready Send. And now what I'll do is to test if this particular area is vulnerable to a no structured query language injection. All right, so what I can do now is enter sleep followed by say 1000. 
And what this does is that because we're not getting any sort of error messages back from the website, we want to use sleep as a function to test whether this view is vulnerable. And what you're seeing here right now from the response is that this is normal. And it took a longer time in order for a response to come in. And you can see right here, we managed to actually find the vulnerable view. So if you see right here, of course, we can see the following, right? This took actually quite some time as compared to the previous request that we made through the web application server. So this means that it is vulnerable. So now the question is, what can we do now that we discovered a vulnerability in the web application system? So what I can do now is to go ahead and turn on Burp Suite. So on the top right corner on Foxy Proxy, I'll click on the Burp Suite. So what I'll do now is go ahead and open up Terminal. All right, and I can turn on Burp Suite right here. So I enter Burp Suite. And of course, I can enter the web suite now. So here we have the community edition running and I can go ahead and click under next, click start burp, and this will begin running burp suite community edition. So once your burp suite running here, all right, make sure that proxy is intercept is on. All right, so make sure that the interception is on so that we can intercept all the requests that is going in into the website and that we can manipulate those changes as we try to inject them into the site. So what I can do now is to go back to OWASP, all right, I can click under apple juice, and right here, we can see the following, get rest products, one reviews, and so on and so forth. So I can go ahead and forward all this. Okay, and now what I'll do is to go ahead and click onto the reviews, and I'll go ahead and click edit review. Okay, and I'll change this to say ASD5, and I'll click submit. I'll go back to Burp Suite right here, and we can see the following. I can see patch slash rest slash products slash reviews, and I can do a right click, and send over to repeater. So once I'm on repeater tab, you can see right here, okay? We have the patch. So these are the different methods that we can send over into web application server. And right at the bottom, we have the payload. So here we have the ID and the message. So I'm gonna change the message to hectored by Mr. Loy, all right? So we have now changed the message. And what's really interesting now is the ID part, because the ID part means that we require a unique review ID in order for us to be able to inject into that review. But what if we want to hijack all the reviews across the entire website? Can we do that? Yes. The answer is an astounding yes. We can actually do that kind of hijack. So what I'll do here is to change this up a little more. Okay, I can open up a curly bracket. And of course, I'll close this off with the curly bracket. And right in front of us, we have, of course, the ID tab. So instead, what I'm going to do now is to change this a little more so that it makes more sense for us to be able to hijack into the system. So what can we do? So we can inject this by using a not equal sign, a not equal option, which will then review every ID as true, which will then allow us to update every single review inside the website. So if I do dollar and e so which stands for not equal and now i'll put a colon and of course towards the end i'll put negative one okay so once i have this what i can do now is go ahead and submit this all right and before i submit this i want you to think logically about what is going on here so what we're trying to do here is to make the id statement all right, in the ID statement, the key value pair, this is going to always be true, which means that whenever we're injecting anything, all right, it will review and post every of this review message as hacked by Mr. Loy. So let's go ahead and click send in three, two, one, click send. All right, so now let us go ahead and take a look at the response. All right, so let's go ahead and click on the response and see what is going on here. So I can see right here, we have product six reviewed by Mr. Hacker Loy. Okay, and of course, we can see all these different messages, we can see all these different authors, and the list goes on. So what I can do now is go back into OWASP Juice Shop, I can close this, I can turn off the proxy, and of course, I can close this, I can do a refresh, of course, and I click onto any products, and if I scroll down further, I click on the reviews, hacked it by Mr. Loy. And now we have successfully changed every single review on the website, allowing us and giving us full control of the entire site and all of those reviews. And of course, you'll be asking the question is, does this work in the real world? Well, surprisingly, it does. Because what we're looking for is a vulnerability in any of these APIs. And once you discover it, you'll be able to input your own values, replacing those existing values. So using web method manipulation, as well as not only structured query language injection. But once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and try my best to answer any of your questions. If you like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.